you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And congratulations on a Thank really you. wonderful film. Thank Watched you. Watched it late last night. Okay. <laughs> Very enthralled by it. Thank you. Um, so maybe you can just start by telling me what gave you the inspiration for this very particular story. It's something very unique about it. Mm. Three completely different uh, female characters at different points in their life mm. in this very unique location. So, you know, what was kind of the inspiration for the story for you? Um, so the initial inspiration um, was back in 2009. I, I just thought it would be a really cool idea to make a Western set in the career. And I didn't I didn't think too much more about it. I was kind of just like, I loved westerns and I loved like the drama and the action and the thrill of them and the kind of setting and the locations that they were usually in. And I just thought, let me do this in a South African context. That would be cool. Um, and I didn't really think about it too much deeper than that. Um, but as I started working on it, I started, I started to really question what a western was and why I wanted to make one so much and why westerns were basically you know this unwritten rule that westerns are for men and by men and about men and why that was and what does it mean that i still enjoy them despite that um so unpacking like what the western was and like investigating it was a lot of what was the initial um inspiration for me um and in terms of the characters and the story um it really was a very organic process of i added to it over a number of years as i was writing it based on what was um important to me in my life at the time and the things that I observed and the kind of feelings that I experienced. Um, so in terms of the story and the characters, was it's really difficult to pin down like the moment where it came together, but in terms of that initial inspiration of just going like, what would a Western be like if the main characters were women? And that sounds like a stupid question actually, but it's it actually, it has a lot of implications, so yeah. Um, you know, how did you go about putting this amazing cast together? Because each of the actresses just seems totally, it's like very raw and, mm. and, and authentic, the, mm. the experience you go through in, in, in the role of each of these characters. So, you know, how did you get these three women together? Um, so, yeah, we have a really incredible um, acting community in South Africa, um, especially in our kind of major cities like Cape Town and Joburg. Um, and we worked on the film for a while and the casting process took quite a long time because we were going to make the film and then the financing fell through and then we had to postpone it but in that process we kept casting so um, Nicole Fortain who plays Natalie it was one of the first people who was involved she was involved she, I think we kind of cast her about two years before we actually made the film um, and yeah we in one sense it was very um, like straightforward like we held auditions and you know we did what filmmakers usually do um, but I think what is really amazing is how how much the the actresses who you know we ended up casting like ended up kind of really owning the characters and I mean it's something I also quite consciously do is that after a point I may have written these characters and I may have be the director of the film but I very make it quite clear that I'm giving the, the character over to them and they from now on are the experts on the character and of course like if they want to come and ask a question about something I'll help them but I very much like defer to them and what they how they see what, what the character would do um, encourage them to take ownership of it. Um, and at the same time, we have a lot of um, non-professional actors, actors in the film. So even though the, the main characters are predominantly quite experienced actors, even Isabel Bazaid, who plays Poppy, is a young actress, but she's done a lot of films um, already. We've also got a lot of people who are acting for the first time. So it's an interesting mix. And, you know, talking about it being kind of a Western, how important was the location for you? Mm. I mean, some of it does feel quite like... Uh, Let's say it's not so, like the beautiful lush landscapes mm. that you can see in other parts. So it's like there's something quite like, you know, being where the lorries are all parked mm. up and they're kind of like partying, you know, like around a little fire. So these are quite kind mm. of like, let's say on the margins, sort of communities mm. and locations. So how important was, were those places mm. for you? Um, very important. I mean, so originally with, with the kind of first inspiration being, oh, a Western in the career. And at, at that point, I think I had a very romanticized idea of what this part of the country was like. And I think all I really knew about it was that, you know, I'd driven through it and it was very flat and there's lots of dry land and it's just good for a Western. I didn't really have like a deeper understanding of it than that. And um, as I worked on the film, I took several visits to both the West in particular, where a lot of the film is set. Um, and just started to realize like how different it was to my perception and channeled as much of that as possible into mm -hmm. the film. Um, and also I think especially, you know, making a Western in contemporary times in South Africa, um, 
what is like what what is what is what is the western landscape now like what is the equivalent of that and what's the equivalent of the frontier or the wild west or what what is that and why so i mean i think it's exploring that was really interesting for me in the film and um also i think you know the i think another really interesting aspect of it, you know in that we when we watch westerns um and we look at you know these cowboys on the frontier like forging ahead and exploring and the you know and what we're seeing in the film is like kind of like the post western it's like mm-hmm. what happens after the land has been conquered and colonized and taken over and now it's reverting back to this kind of lawlessness again and so yeah it's very interesting kind of context and for me there are so many different themes that come out of this mm. film because you've got the three different women at completely different points in their life facing mm. their own difficulties a kind of naive young mm. bride young pregnant teenager and then it's kind of a middle-aged woman then on top of that there's also issues of race certainly you know the friendship that the, mm-hmm. uh, the two young girls have and the, how they're approached and then mm-hmm. um faith character also what she um beauty what she mm-hmm. endures so what do you think are the kinds of different themes that are going on there and and what did you mm-hmm. want them to take away um yeah i mean I've, i think some some kind of feedback i've had on the film is that it like takes on a lot and it's got all these themes going on and i find that quite strange because to me it's very clear that these themes are really interrelated and it's very difficult to speak about just race or just class um or just gender without talking about the other themes as well um or you can but it's generally going to be an oversimplification and it would feel wrong to me and it's, i mean i think this is especially true of a south african context but i mean i think it's a global thing too um so for me it only makes sense to l- look at the world through these multi- like multiple themes at the same time and look at how they intersect um and so because it's always going to be complicated and because i also i think choose to make films rather than to do something else because I love how complicated film is and how multi-layered it is and how it brings all these mediums together to create this like very com- complex experience. It's not I definitely don't think there's like one thing that I want people to take away from it. I think for me the I just I think for me it's successful if people have like gone into the cinema and experienced something and they come out feeling all sorts of feels, <laughs> you know, and then they can process that at their own rate and their own time and decide what they think. But um I definitely don't subscribe to the to the notion that there's you go it's like a sausage factory that you go into the cinema, experience come out, you take something, you know, like it's it's more complicated and subtle, subtle than that. And I think in in that complexity, there's not sort of a clear right or wrong at mm-hmm. any moment, you know, there's kind of injustices that seem to go on all sides mm-hmm. and you know, that kind of you can't sort of just get behind one person and say they're purely innocent because mm. everybody's kind of it's almost more like a slice of life film like mm-hmm. a slice of life film in that respect mm. would you say that it's not necessarily trying to give out a message or or have a, a solid conclusion either it's just mm. watching these characters go through these experiences yeah i i mean i think the the i mean i would also the film for me is it's definitely is a political film and it definitely has things to say and it definitely a lot of those things are intentional um and it's not like i i definitely don't come at it from like a a political perspective like it's a very political film um but i just think that um that it's it's so different to you know if if i had a way easy way of summing up the things i wanted to say i wouldn't be making films i'd be doing something else mm. um but the fact is that i only the only way i need know to speak about the world as i see it is in this way um and so even though there is no like one message i still it doesn't necessarily like drift along without any judgment or mm. like mm. um sense of you know like commentary at all like it is quite clearly like there's a lot of choices in the film that say certain things that were intentional um yeah but it's not it doesn't fit the boxes of like right and wrong or um happily ever after or perfect character arc that i think mm-hmm. is often expected from a film and do you think that we're going through sort of quite a positive moment in cinema in terms of being able to portray these sort of complex female led stories that mm-hmm. aren't you know just female character plonked in you know mm. like the good bad wife mother mm. um but also having female directed mm-hmm. films it seems like there's uh, a lot more prominence given to and platforms given to mm. um, different kinds of cinema do you think that's true and mm. we still got a way to go to kind of have more diversity um 
I think definitely progress is being made, um, but I think there's still a long way to go. Um, I think just the fact that I find, you know, the the fact that it's still so noteworthy, you know, that it's like that, that this film is made by a woman and that, you know, I mean, I, could, I mean, it was also shot by a woman. It was also, you know, like, so, I mean, there's a, you know, but the fact that that is unusual or worth a comment is, shows the fact that things are not, are still, you know, stuck in a certain place. So, um, um, I also think, you know, I, especially coming from a South African context, I think I'm very, like, aware of the fact that, um, we, while we're lauding the kind of new opportunities that are open to women, also to not forget that those opportunities are often exclusive to women, uh, to white women. Um, and so it's not for me something to celebrate until that's really, that door is really opened to, you know, all sorts of women. Um, and it's not necessarily still subject to those kind of class and race um, uh, structures that every other aspect of life is too. So it's not like a success or a win yet, I think. Um, but of course, I mean, I'm just happy to be able to do my job and to be able to make films. And if the advances that we've made recently contribute to that, then of course I'm like very grateful. Um, but it still always comes down to me for like, the only way I get things done is if I believe I can do it. Um, so, that's kind of what I've learned over the process of making films. And so I'm kind of become quite immune to this like feeling of like, oh, you can't, you can't do this because you're a woman. It's just because like, yeah, I can't afford to. Can you quickly tell us what your next project might be if you already know what it is? Um, it's very, very early days still, um, but I'm, I'm very interested in genre. So I'm always kind of looking at ways of subverting it and turning it around and doing something the opposite of what we used to expect with it. Um, so at the moment, I'm really interested in horror and I'm really interested in the, um, yeah, the kind of the socio-political commentary that's possible in horror that feels like very, like horror seems to have a lot of potential for that that other genres don't in a lot of ways. So I'm really interested in that. Um, and also set in South Africa, but it's, it's still early, so I still have to make sure that I can get the money to make sure, it, yeah. so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much for your time, and it's congratulations again on a, a really wonderful film. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for the questions. Thank so, you. Yeah.